The Tasmanian tiger, or thylacine, was once the top marsupial predator of Australia and Tasmania. It had a dog-like body with yellowish-brown fur and dark stripes across its back, earning it the nickname Tasmanian tiger. Tragically, this unique species was declared extinct after the last known thylacine died in captivity in 1936. Today, nearly a century later, scientists are actively working on an ambitious plan to de-extinct the thylacine using cutting-edge genetics and reproductive technology to create a living proxy of this lost species. In partnership with academic researchers, the biotech startup Colossal Biosciences aims to bring the Tasmanian tiger back to life and restore it to its ecosystem. This video explores the biological history of the thylacine, why it went extinct, what de-extinction entails, and how Colossal's plan from genome sequencing and CRISPR editing to artificial wombs and rewilding might achieve the unprecedented feat of reviving an extinct animal. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button, hit the bell icon, and like this video, as it's the best way to support this channel. And if you enjoy it, consider sharing it around. The thylacine was a marsupial, a pouched mammal, that evolved to be an apex predator, filling a similar ecological niche to wolves or tigers despite being unrelated to them. It once ranged across mainland Australia, Tasmania, and New Guinea, in habitats from grasslands to eucalyptus forests. Adults were about 100 to 130 centimetres long, or 39 to 51 inches, with a stiff tail and could weigh 15 to 30 kilograms. They were carnivorous marsupials that hunted at night, preying on animals like wallabies, birds and small mammals. A remarkable feature was the thylacine's jaws, which could open to an almost 90 degree gape. In Tasmania, the thylacine stood as the only marsupial apex predator in modern times, as no other native carnivore was large enough to rival it. On mainland Australia, thylacines declined earlier, likely due to competition with the introduced dingo thousands of years ago. By the time European settlers arrived in the 19th century, thylacines were found mainly in Tasmania. The extinction of the thylacine is a sad story of the impact of humans on animals. European colonists in Tasmania blamed thylacines for attacking sheep and poultry. Starting in the 1800s, bounties were placed on the tigers, incentivizing intense hunting. The Van Diemen's Land Company offered rewards for killing thylacines as early as 1830, and the Tasmanian government set a one-pound bounty per head in 1888. These policies led to relentless persecution, Within just a few decades, a population that once numbered in the thousands was virtually exterminated. By around 1910 to 1920, the last wild thylacines had been killed. Habitat destruction and introduced diseases likely exacerbated the decline. By 1914, thylacines were very rare. Sadly, protective legislation came in too late. In July of 1936, thylacines were finally granted protective status. But only two months afterward, the last known individual, nicknamed Benjamin, died in Hobart Zoo on September 7, 1936. This marked the end of the species, caused not by natural disaster, but by deliberate human actions. The loss of the thylacine left Tasmania without its top predator, an absence that had ripple effects on the ecosystem. For instance, overpopulation of prey species and the spread of disease among Tasmanian devils in an imbalanced environment. Now, scientists view the thylacine story as a motivation to develop new conservation tools, including possibly reversing its extinction. De-extinction refers to the process of creating an organism that closely resembles an extinct species, effectively bringing it back in a form that can reoccupy its ecological role. This is not magic or science fiction, but is rooted in advances in genomics and biotechnology. Unlike traditional cloning, which requires an intact living cell of the animal to be copied, de-extinction typically involves gene editing. Scientists use DNA retrieved from museum specimens of the extinct animal to read its genome, and then edit the genome of a close living relative to reproduce the extinct species' traits. The end result would be a living proxy of the extinct species, genetically and physically very similar to the original, though not 100% identical. In essence, de-extinction aims to resurrect lost genes and characteristics in a new organism that can survive and reproduce. For the thylacine, de-extinction is considered because the species went extinct recently, and its ecosystem niche is still vacant and needed. 
The thylacine's case benefits from relatively well-preserved DNA. Many specimens exist in museums. Pelts, skeletons, even a pickled thylacine pup and a 110-year-old pickled thylacine head, from which DNA has been extracted. In 2022, Colossal Biosciences announced a partnership with the University of Melbourne's Thylacine Integrated Genetic Restoration Research Lab, also fittingly known as TIGRR or TIGER, to pursue thylacine de-extinction. Professor Andrew Pask, who leads TIGER, has studied thylacine genetics for over a decade and helped assemble the species genome. With new funding and technology from Colossal, what was once a dream is now an active scientific project. Today's sponsor is Odoo, an all-in-one management software that provides business owners with a suite of applications to simplify the day-to-day -day management of their business. The Odoo Website Builder is a powerful tool that makes designing a website quick, easy and efficient. And the best part, Odoo is completely free for your first app. With unlimited hosting, support and a free personalised domain for the first year, you get everything you need to get started at no cost. Now let's talk about what makes Odoo's Website Builder stand out. Odoo's intuitive drag and drop system makes it easy to structure your site without needing any technical skills. You can fully customize every block, choose from a variety of templates, and place elements like text, images, or buttons exactly where you want them. Want to add visuals? No problem. You can easily import images or videos directly from your computer or use Odoo's built-in Unsplash library for high-quality, royalty-free content. Customize your visuals with fixed or animated shapes for a polished professional look. Add dynamic animations, adjust the speed, and even tweak the typography with Google Fonts to give your site a unique branded feel. You can also play with color palettes and effects. Odoo's Website Builder really lets you create a site that reflects your business, making it look as professional as possible without any hassle. So if you're ready to design a beautiful functional website that's uniquely yours, give Odoo a try. Click the link in the description to get started for free and see how Odoo can help you build your dream website. Thank you so much to Odoo for sponsoring this video. Colossal's approach involves several key steps and innovations. The first step was to obtain the full genetic code of the thylacine. Using DNA from preserved specimens, including exceptionally well-preserved material, like that pickled thylacine head found in a museum, the team has reconstructed a thylacine genome that is over 99.9% .9 complete and accurate. This is one of the most complete genomes ever assembled for an extinct species. Having a high quality reference genome is crucial. It's the blueprint that scientists will try to recreate in a living cell. Since we cannot recover living cells of thylacines, the plan is to build a thylacine-like genome within the cells of a living species. Researchers identified the fat-tailed dunnet as the thylacine's closest living relative in the marsupial family tree. The fat-tailed dunnet is a tiny mouse-like carnivorous marsupial native to Australia. Though separated from thylacines by roughly 40 million years of evolution, dunnets share enough genetic commonalities to serve as a foundation. They are also abundant, breed quickly, and can adapt to captivity, making them practical surrogate hosts. Colossal's team has been sequencing the dunnets genome and comparing it to the thylacine genome to map all the differences between the two species. With the genetic differences in hand, scientists can use CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing to modify the dunnets cells. The aim is to edit the Dunnett's DNA at every point where it diverges from the thylacine's DNA. In practice, this means making potentially hundreds of thousands of precise genetic changes to transform a Dunnett cell into something very close to a thylacine cell. This is a massive bioengineering task, far more complex than, say, the recent de-extinction of a dire wolf proxy, which reportedly involved only 15 gene edits. However, progress is underway. By late 2024, the team had successfully made over 300 edits to Dunnett cells, creating what Colossal calls the most edited animal cell to date. They achieved this by first reprogramming ordinary Dunnett skin cells into induced pluripotent stem cells, or iPSCs, versatile cells that can grow and multiply in the lab. These iPSCs can then be genetically edited with CRISPR. Each edit alters a specific gene or DNA sequence to match the thylacine's genome. Over time, through successive edits, the DNA in these cells should begin to closely resemble that of an actual thylacine. Once the scientists have a sufficiently edited cell with the thylacine genome, the next step is to create an embryo. The leading method is somatic cell nuclear transfer, SCNT. 
the same cloning technique that produced Dolly the sheep. In SCNT, the nucleus, which contains the DNA of an egg cell, is removed and replaced with the nucleus from a donor cell. In this case, researchers would take an egg from a fat-tailed dunnet and replace its nucleus with the nucleus of the gene-edited thylacine cell. The egg is then stimulated with chemical or electrical signals to start dividing as if it were fertilized. This process will quote-unquote trick the egg into developing into an embryo that carries the thylacine genetic code. Colossal has indicated that they will either implant such an embryo into a female dunnet or grow it in an artificial marsupial uterus device. Notably, the team has already made strides in marsupial SCNT and embryology. They discovered how to induce ovulation in female dunnets and have successfully grown fertilized dunnet embryos about halfway through the gestation period using an artificial uterus bioreactor. These achievements are milestones, not just for de-extinction, but for marsupial reproductive science in general. One advantage in the thylacine project is that marsupial gestation is very short, and the newborns are extremely small. A thylacine's pregnancy is estimated at only about three weeks. The joey, or baby, is born at a stage when it's essentially an embryo. Blind, hairless, and only the size of a grain of rice. This makes it feasible to use in vitro systems. Growing a tiny marsupial embryo outside a body is less daunting than for large placental mammals. Colossal is developing what it calls an exodev artificial womb, a device that can support an embryo through those critical early weeks. If a surrogate mother dunnet is used instead, she would carry the edited embryo and give birth to a tiny thylacine-like joey. However, there is a size mismatch to consider. A thylacine infant, while tiny at birth, would grow into a much larger animal than a dunnet. A mother dunnet could potentially carry the fetus to birth, since it's very small initially, but she could not nurture the young thylacine in her pouch to full term without assistance. Her pouch and milk supply are meant for a 20 gram dunnet, not a larger pup. To solve this, Colossal Biosciences and its partners plan to use a high-tech marsupial pouch simulator, or exo pouch, for rearing the newborn thylacine proxy. Essentially the idea is to transfer the newborn joey into an artificial pouch that mimics all the conditions of a mother's pouch. Warm, secure, and supplied with the right nutrients. The exo pouch would deliver marsupial milk formula tailored to the joey's developmental stage. In nature, marsupial milk composition changes as the young grow, and the exo pouch will replicate this. Using an exo pouch, multiple thylacine young could be raised without needing actual thylacine mothers a critical capability since no thylacine mothers exist. Interestingly, this technology is expected to have spillover benefits. For example, Tasmanian devils, an endangered marsupial, give birth to 20 to 30 tiny joeys, but can only nurse a few. An exo pouch could save the surplus devil babies by providing an artificial pouch for them to continue developing. Such innovations in marsupial neonatal care are being developed alongside the thylacine project. As the thylacine proxy joey grows fur, opens its eyes, and eventually outgrows the exo pouch, it would be moved into a controlled enclosure. At this point, it would look and behave like a juvenile Tasmanian tiger. Scientists would then have to ensure it learns how to eat solid food and develop normal predatory behaviours. Since no living thylacine adults exist to mentor the young, researchers might introduce surrogate training methods or allow the joey to interact with other marsupials. For example, some behaviours might be instinctive, but others could require enrichment and training. The ultimate goal is to have a healthy adult thylacine proxy that is as close as possible, in genome, appearance and behaviour, to the original animal. Colossal stretch goal is a creature that is over 99% genetically identical to the extinct thylacine, effectively indistinguishable to all but the most detailed genetic analysis. Achieving this may take several iterations of editing and breeding, the first successful animal might be, say, 90% of the way there, but subsequent refinements could yield increasingly thylacine-accurate genomes. Ecologically, introducing the thylacine is envisioned as a way to restore balance in Tasmanian ecosystems. The thylacine's absence may have allowed certain prey populations like wallabies or possums to grow unchecked and enabled invasive species or diseases to spread. A top predator often has cascading effects on an ecosystem. For example, the reintroduction of grey wolves to Yellowstone Park in the US famously helped reduce overgrazing and even altered river courses due to vegetation recovery. 
Similarly, thylacines could help control herbivore numbers and remove sick animals, potentially reducing disease transmission. The quest to bring back the Tasmanian tiger is a remarkable intersection of technology, ecology, and imagination. What was once deemed impossible, seeing a thylacine prowling Tasmanian forests again, is now a scientific endeavour with real momentum. Colossal Biosciences and its partners are assembling the genetic puzzle of the thylacine piece by piece, leveraging genome sequencing, CRISPR gene editing, somatic cell nuclear transfer, and novel marsupial breeding techniques. If they succeed, it would mark the first time a truly extinct animal has been revived and returned to the wild. Such success would not only rewrite the fate of the thylacine, but also demonstrate new ways to combat the biodiversity crisis. Still, it must be done carefully, with respect for ethical boundaries, and the complex web of life into which the thylacine would be reintroduced. I hope you found this as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching.